Good evening, friends. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And, you know, I've been working on doing a teaching on the book of Joel. And uh, it is a very interesting book. And tonight, instead of going into a teaching on the book of Joel, I want to focus more on chapter 2, verse 10. And I think that'll kind of help set the stage for the teaching. I'll do on this later because it is a very fascinating book. And uh, I, I think that there's going to be some very interesting insights that you'll glean from uh, the book of Joel, the prophecies there. And of course, what parts of these are fulfilled? Uh, you know, it speaks about the former and latter rain coming. And oftentimes that is applied to a future event when actually Jesus himself fulfilled the former and latter rain. He was both former and latter rain. Um, but at any rate there, this verse here, chapter 2, verse 10, Before them the earth quaketh, the heavens tremble, the sun and the moon are become black, and the stars withdraw their shining. All right. And the Lord uttered his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is mighty that executeth his word. For great is the day of the Lord and very terrible, and who can abide it? All right. Now, I'm going to just stop there, verse 11, because like I said, I wanted to focus on verse 10. Let's look again at the part I have highlighted here. The sun and the moon are become black. Interesting verbiage right there. Shemesh ve'yoreach kadavu. They are, they become actually, they could be translated because it's an ashen color, not the word black. Shachol would be black, not kadavu. It could be translated, like I said, as an ashen uh, which would not necessarily be a color, but is a sign of mourning. But then it says, and the stars withdraw their shining. Actually, another way to translate the word withdraw right there would be diminish. The stars diminish their shining. Now, to kind of maybe get an idea of where I'm going on this, uh, uh, let me take you to Genesis chapter 37 and remind you of the dream that Joseph had. If you remember, this was right, uh, Genesis chapter 37, this is right before um, his brothers who hated him because of his spiritual side of him, the dreams and visions that he had. And of course, they decided to do a very evil to him, even willing to kill him. Uh, and as they said, we'll see what comes of his dreams and his visions. Well, here's one that he has, Genesis 37, chapter 37, that is, in verse 9 and 10. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed yet a dream, and behold, the sun and the moon and eleven stars bowed down to me. And he told it to his father, to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said to him, what is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down to thee to the earth? Now, his father immediately recognizes, Jacob recognizes that his dream is a representation of, of course, Jacob. Is you know, his mother, uh, in this case here, would be Rachel, and his 11 brothers. The sun and the moon being the parents, uh, Jacob and Rachel, and of course the 11 brothers, the tribes of Israel, later divided and becoming the house of Israel, the house of Judah. But that gives us new perspective if we consider Joel Joel, uh, Joel in chapter 2 verse 10 the sun and the moon are literally ashened or mourning you might say 
and the stars are diminishing or withdraw their shining. Diminishing is a better translation there because not that they withdrew it, or you could say withdrew, but if we look at this as a possibility that Joel is actually speaking this in a parable, that the stars were the tribes of Israel. They withdrew their shining. What does the scripture say? You know, it's interesting if we think about it because the not just the Qumranite community uh, down with, that wrote in the Dead Sea Scrolls about the sons of darkness and sons of light, but even Paul wrote in his own writings there, uh, and, and Jesus himself is quoted as saying, you are not in darkness. And I think that's actually Paul that says that, you, that, the, that the day of the Lord would take you as, uh, unaware. So, this was common that it is an analogy that that is was spoken of in those days there that some of the sons of Israel had become darkened because of sin and ungodliness so that leaves us in with the sun and the moon because you know there's so many so many ministers today really focused on blood moons and things like that and that's okay that's their prerogative they can do that i'm not here to beat up on them by saying that but there's a lot of focus on blood moons and things of this nature here and we're not considering the possibility that there is there is a a, a parable or a spiritual side of this so and there's more i'm just just beginning to start here so the sun and the moon be, became black or they became ashen they became mourning But either way, or you could say if they're, they've become black, in other words, they're no longer there. They're not shining. They've gone on to be. They've passed away. But the children of Israel, they withdrew their light. And there's so much prophetic words about that. Um, we can even see in some of the writings uh, that were found in the Dead Sea Scrolls by Levi about how the, the, his, his descendants would go into darkness. Uh, we know Moses wrote of these things as well, prophesying that the tribes of Israel would forsake God. They would basically withdraw their shine. Okay, now let's look at Psalm 148 in light of this information. Psalm 148, verse 2 and verse 3. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his host. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Wow. You know, I used to always say when it came to Genesis 37 that Joseph's vision was never fulfilled in Joseph. It was fulfilled in the greater Joseph, which would have been Jesus. And the reason I say that is because his mother, Rachel, died before he could ever see his mother. And so therefore, she never came and bowed to him. But when Christ came, there was a resurrection. And we have no idea for sure what happened then. But I can just imagine when Christ went there to deliver the saints. Because remember, the scripture says and. Matthew, I believe it is, chapter 27 or 28 there, speaks about that the saints, many of the saints which slept in the dust there, the rose up and came and appeared unto many. So no doubt, the sun and the moon and the stars all bowed, just as Joseph's dream was uh, prophesying of, although Joseph just did not realize at that time that this was speaking of Christ himself, that, would, that he was a type of. But we see here, Praise you, him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. And then we have Deuteronomy 4. Unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, thou be drawn away and worship them and serve them. Now, even though this was a warning to Israel not to get into idolatry, Sometimes I wonder if we couldn't consider this 
to the nations of today, the Gentiles of today, and how they have also begun to worship the host of heaven, the sun and the moon and the stars. How many people worship Israel, a secular state, or they worship Talmudic rabbis? That's something to be thought about. <clears throat> In closing, let me turn to Isaiah chapter 13 as well to give you one more to think about. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, full of wrath and fierce anger to make the earth a desolation and destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened and is going forth and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Again, if we consider this to be a type of the pro, uh, or, or prophetic, which it is prophetic, we know that Isaiah 13 is a prophetic chapter, and we realize that when it's speaking about the day of the Lord that cometh cruel and full of wrath and fierce anger to make the earth a desolation and destroy the sinners thereof out of it, um, some might try to apply that to a day yet coming but it also could be very arguably applied to 70 AD. Um, I will visit upon the world their evil and upon the, the, the wicked their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and I will lay, uh, lay low the haughtiness of the tyrants. But isn't it interesting, though? Again, we find, like I said, the sun and the moon, they're darkened, and the stars are not giving their light. See, Israel was to be a light of the, of the world. But she lost her light. Especially when the time came and Christ came. But there was still a remnant that did believe him. And as Jesus said, you are a light set on a hill. You don't hide a light under a bushel. So there were still a remnant of the stars moving forward. I just thought I'd share that with you and trust it's a blessing to you. And uh, and do, if you if God lays it upon your heart, please remember the ministry here. Your support is greatly appreciated. And uh, don't forget also to go to Brand New Tube. Let me see. I don't know if I can get on it here for some reason where I'm at right now. I've been having a very difficult time being able to log in. Yeah, I still can't. Something about the proxy firewalls is just not letting me go there. Um, I'll try one other way there for you real quick. But yeah, brand new tube, uh, Israeli News Live, and, and I can promise you, if you don't use the link that will be provided for you below, um, you just won't be able to, to, to get to our channel. There's another channel there that is posting our videos. Uh, aha, we got I got on this time. Okay, great. So... Brand new tube and uh, not logged in through this way here before, so um, I forget what our login information is. But anyway, you can easily find us, like I said, over here at Brand New Tube, and um, is uh, in the link is in the description below. So be sure to copy and paste. It's brandnewtube.com forward slash Israeli News Live. That's what will take you to our channel. But that link, just copy it and paste it. You'll be right to it. And also, uh, if you feel led to uh, support the, the broadcast, visit our website, israelinewslive.org, and you can do so online. Or, evening, oh, sorry about that. Uh, or by mail. We have that. We're going to have some changes to the website very soon. Uh, so we're really looking forward to that. I think it'll be a blessing for you. And... Uh, and maybe it's already, the change is already there. Let's see here. It looks like it is. All right. So, yes, we have, uh, we are. So let's go back. Looks like we are. I don't know if this is a change or not, but I knew that there was going to be a panel of four other frames of the latest videos, and that does seem to be there. That could be as a result already of the way it is, but I'm not sure. But I think this is what we were looking at doing there. Uh, so, Hopefully that'll be a blessing to you. In other words, instead of just the one video that you would see on the channel here, 
you would actually see these uh, the latest four videos on the channel that are embedded into the website now. Uh, so I trust that'll be a blessing. But anyway, our address there is there, Institute, 8297 Champions Gate Boulevard, pound 442, Champions Gate, Florida, 33896. Or you can donate there online just by clicking the link there uh, on the right side of the screen. And also, don't forget EMP Shield. I don't want to leave this just left blank. And in the description below, you can get a, uh, you can get a coupon code um, that you can use for EMP Shield, INL50. And I'm not saying this to try to just sell you something. I really believe this is something that may end up benefiting us one day. It, to me, it's more like an insurance policy. So whatever you need, whether it be for your home, your vehicle, and normally when it's for your home, it's to help protect your appliances and stuff. Uh, if you have solar panels, you you know, it's very good. Uh, I hear that the solar panel by itself is not really in danger of an EMP strike, but it's the system you put together to make that solar panel work, uh, like your battery, backup batteries, your... your um, regulator, things like that, or, or inverter, whatever you call that there. Those are the things that would be in danger. If you're using a generator, you need to have one for your generator. Uh, so, you know, and of course, my biggest issue has been if my wife's somewhere shopping uh, or, or, you know, she's just gone to the, to the grocery store. Uh, I don't want her to be 10 or 15 miles away and an EMP strike happen because there is so much possibility of weapons being used by other nations or even our own nation, and this creating a disaster separating you from your family. Uh, you know, or kids are in school and an EMP strike comes, and you need to be able to pick up your kids and you don't have a vehicle to do so. So there's a lot of reasons why I am promoting this, and it's because I believe that it would be an excellent way to protect your family and things like that. Anyway, I'm Steve Benoon. Thank you for, for listening here this evening. I trust the message has been a blessing to you guys.